This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. How much do you know about Dario Franchitti? We know that he won the Indy 500 a year ago. We know he won the IndyCar title and wanted to come NASCAR racing. Here's the 0-1 car. Yeah, we've had a little bit of contact, too. He's got a radiator busted. He's got parts falling off. He's probably going to have to throw a caution here to fix it's this. Water. No, contact, top of your screen there, the 29 and the 0-1. Yeah, just a little miscalculation right there. And you're racing some of these guys, you don't really know where they're going to back off. Yeah. Nationwide action, wanted Infineon in the cup car. Can he make it three in a row? He will lead him down to the green flag here on lap number 14. Oh, looks like the land rush. They're five and six wide and heavy contact there. The 27 car has got Coleman's damaged. got his car torn up. Looks like Mike Bliss has got a quarter panel off makes this difficult too because you're trying to get a run you see things jam up there we've got mike bliss and whoa and another car for patrick okay. carpentier like got a lot of damage there yeah that was coleman and carpentier that got together uh the 27 and the nine everyone's fanning out trying to get out of the way whoa. oh my gosh look at the air he catches there man brad coleman up on the back of the right rear quarter panel gonna go over remember pinning backwards right side left side now i'm confused on the left side first and then around to the right side for kyle bush and we'll see if this will play into his hands guys but andy like you said he's going to lose all of that track position get it yeah. gathered up now it's coming here got a car spun around here Stephen oh Wallace. yeah well, we're gonna have one at the line coming at you just a moment ago now steven's on the inside of P.J. Jones gets into him pretty hard right here. Turns the 81 car around. Steven slows down to avoid getting into the side of P.J. Jones. Here's P.J. and Steven getting ready to make the turn. And uh, it could be a little payback here. <laughs> what do you think, Dale? <laughs> well, that's five. Axel's running second. Yeah, Racing for the lead. He's in pretty good position, having pitted on lap 12 because of the yellow. Just, uh, whoa. 65 spinning. Uh, Careful. Oh, that's a bad place right there. Nowhere to go. Probably going to bring out a caution because that's, a, as you said, Andy, a bad spot up through the S's. Hammer from Mike Bliss. Oh, didn't see the one car inside there on the little crossover move. Uh, it's a Toyota. And the, the first uh -oh. time we got a few problems here. Oh! oh. Perez gets a uh, hornish and that will put debris out that moment that will necessitate a full course yellow flag and there it flies right now they are yeah, a little yeah contact he there he got into him just a little bit Looks like Sam was gonna be okay right here and he gets clipped by this 86 car and that's probably gonna end his day with that car uh, it's unfortunate he Jeff Burton the Holiday Inn Chevy bringing him down for the restart here Remember, the top 10 cars are got to hope they can get a lot of fuel mileage here because they pitted earlier. There's Jimmy Johnson, the 88 car, Kevlowski, Marcus Ambrose, and uh, Carl Edwards making a move. Oh, contact. Pimp Boyer. One, two, and the points come together in turn one at Watkins Glen. Get cranked here if you can. Hold it tight. Let's get a little extra practice for tomorrow's race. And he has Shane Wilson, who, of course, is its crew chief. Guys, there's trouble on the track. 29. That is Kevin Harvick's teammate, Jeff Burton, who was one of the quickest cars in practice. He finished second here a year ago. Got very lucky to get his action, and it is getting hairy up front. You're not going to believe what happened just a moment ago. The 29 car of Jeff Burton was the leader being chased by Kyle Busch. Here's the contact now. These two get together and go spinning off the racetrack, back on the racetrack, do a full 360. Kyle Busch keeps the lead or gets the lead from, from Burton. And only on ABC. Stan Barrett off the track here in the 30 car and just does get a get the car across the racetrack and misses a car going by. We will stay green, watch uh, the 30 car right side. She gets in there a little too hot, jumps the curb, spins her around. He run out of fuel right here. He no, is out of fuel. Corner. Yep, he is. That that tells you right there. These guys are way short on fuel. Yeah, they weren't even close there. Yeah, they couldn't save that. But they couldn't amount 
They could have never saved that amount of fuel. Yeah, he pitted two laps later than uh, the 29 of Jeff Burton. Burton pitted on lap 43. And, I'd be uh, surprised if Burton makes it too. Yeah, I gotta believe that's really worrying Jeff Burton. Here comes Jimmy down to Chad Canals. Still the top 20 if we can get it started quick enough. There are 26 cars on the lead lap, and what they're trying to do is get him back out. Morris said a little off-road racing there, back on the asphalt. Uh oh, 29 cars out, running out of fuel also. He is out of gas, up in the inner loop, slowing down. Uh, Burton's still going. There's Newman spinning around. Front stretch, all on the front stretch. They're still green. On the checkered flag, running out of fuel. If they're getting the same mileage. Got lots of gas. Just keep it on the pavement. That was the crew chief for Marcus Ambrose. Telling him you got plenty of fuel. Just keep it on the pavement. <laughs> Gary Cogswell talking to Marcus. Gary Cogswell has been a part of a lot of different drivers getting their first win. Here's the 66 car. Stephen Wallace out of fuel with two to go. I got a feeling we're going to litter the racetrack with cars running out of fuel here because we've had so many green flag laps. Providing they all make it back and don't get stopped on the racetrack somewhere, that could bring up a whole nother That could scenario. bring up a green-white checker, which could put a lot of people in trouble on fuel. It was a year ago at Montreal. Everyone thought Marcus, uh, the one of the most likable drivers in the garage area, would get his first win. He gets tapped from behind by Robbie Gordon, and the win goes away. This year at Mexico City, he was the uh, center of controversy because he got some contact with Boris said and he ended up finishing second. He finished third last week in Montreal. There's the uh, Stephen Wallace car pulling off on the grass as we stay green with two laps to go. Actually coming to the white flag this lap. Well, we've got debris on the racetrack laying around. and That's okay. Marcus Ambrose just took the white flag. The next flag you'll see will be the checker. Will there be no green-white checker here? Fran Keaty looking racy, trying to make a move around Harvick. Harvick looks to the inside of Kenseth. Again, that's second, third, fourth, and fifth. Final lap, JTG Doherty Racing. Tad Geschechter. Brad Doherty, the co-owners on the 59 car. How special would this be for Marcus Ambrose? All the way from Tasmania, little island just below Easy Australia. now, easy now. Boris didn't catch him, catch him, uh, cut him any slack at all here. No love lost. Remember, it was Boris said, who said, I will get even. Remember, he was very angry after what happened in Mexico City, and Marcus Ambrose needs to tiptoe here. I believe I'd just follow him to the check. Yeah, there's no reason to pass him. He's got plenty of cushion back there. These guys aren't going to catch him from behind unless Boris just acts, stops. Kyle Busch trying to reel him in. Turn 10. The caution, that's it. That's it. Race is over. 59 car, Marcus Ambrose. How about that? Gary Cogswell celebrates on the pit box. Go Marcus, we go, guys. And Marcus, yeah. Marcus Ambrose goes to victory lane for the first time in his career at Watkins Glen. Yeah, that's a pretty special day. He did a terrific job, and they played the strategy perfect. Caution was for the 66 on the course, and uh, that was the reason for the flag. Marcus Ambrose, very popular among the drivers in the garage area, always has a smile on his face. Way to go, mate! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't believe it, man. What a day. We break the back of that duck, man. We're away. Woo! Great job, guys. His crew chief, Gary Cogswell, has been a part of a lot of first-time winners. Let's go down to Jamie. And what this copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.